All right, so we'll head on in and we'll go to the unit first. So here it is. This is the Brink Flare 400 HRV, which is what we're gonna be in installing today. So just while we're here, let's go through a couple of quick little tips for the unit itself. So you've got the door here, which provides easy access to the core, as well as changing those filters out. Got a pretty cool display screen, which can provide status updates and help you go through software updates. And then this is something that I definitely wanted to bring your attention to as well. So this is going to help us ensure that we're putting the right ductwork in the right places. So looking at both of those, you can see there's a symbol, the arrows outside of the house, which means that both of these are dealing with the exhaust going out of the house and the supply going in. And then you've got the same symbols over here. So inside the house what kind of air do you want inside the house you want fresh air and then what kind of air do you want leaving the house exhaust air from kitchens bathrooms and things like that so we're going to be keeping this map in mind for when we connect our eight inch insulated ductwork to these two ports right here and then we're going to be keeping in mind to install the manifolds to these two over here so I wanted to talk about a couple of the key components of the interior air distribution system. So starting from the manifold, so this is the 10 port manifold that's going to be connecting directly to the Brink HRV. And these 10 ports are for this semi-rigid ductwork. So you can see I've already got one of the rubber O-rings around it, which once you put it in there is gonna provide seal and then picturing this semi-rigid ductwork going all around the building and connecting to the diffuser boxes so you can see these diffuser boxes have caps on them because you want to ensure that the system stays sealed for when drywall is happening so that you don't get dust in the system but once that's all done you would put one of these three diffuser caps on them so you've got one for supply one for extract and a special one with a filter integrated in it for the kitchen because oftentimes you're dealing with grease and things like that in the kitchen. All right, so installing the 10 port manifold here. We were given these brackets to secure both of them and we're in the process of securing them now. But as I was doing before, I've got this eight inch insulated ductwork with about an inch and a half of it cut back so that it fits snugly in there. And then on the bottom here, you can see we've got some of those reduction gaskets. So when it comes to mounting these diffuser boxes, it's really quite a simple process. So here's one mounted on the wall. As you can see, we just use couple machine screws into that stud. Got a piece of blocking there to secure the diffuser box to the wall. It's gonna be nice and flush against the drywall. And then the diffuser cap's just gonna go right on it. And one thing that you'll notice about these diffuser boxes is that some of them have three ports for semi-rigid and some of them have two. So this is because each of these semi-rigid ducts brings in about 12 to 15 CFM. And the concept being, you want higher rates of flow in areas that you use quite a lot and a little bit less flow in areas that you don't use as much. So this is gonna be the diffuser box for the living space. So that's gonna be used quite a bit. This diffuser box for the kitchen three semi-rigid ducts going into this one. We want about 36 CFM coming out of that. And then we've got the fancy diffuser cap for the kitchen with the filter integrated into it. And then we've got to go 
got two more runs of supply for the master bedroom right over there. So what Jordan's doing here right now is he's using just that normal galvanized steel banding that is the favorite of every plumber to secure the semi-rigid within the joist space so that it stays secure for the time that it's in here. All right, so now I'm going to teach you how to connect the semi-rigid that we've already run through the floor into the kitchen extract diffuser box. So first thing you gotta do, measure how much you need and cut. I'll show you quickly how to cut this. So you get this really fancy tool with all of the semi-rigid duct and all the other brake components. And it's just got a little blade in here. So if we zoom in on what's going on here, just to show you, you put this in the groove below what you wanna cut. And then there's your arrow telling you which way to turn it. And usually it only takes one to take it right off. So it's super simple that way. And you pull it off, you can put it in your pocket from there. And then next step, is getting one of these o-rings and just popping it over the groove that's closest to you boom fit around quite nicely there you go and then it's just a matter of applying a bit of pressure for the pressure fit to ensure that it stays in there and then these tabs here that you can see on the diffuser box. So these are what you use to secure it long-term. So what you can do is use the same cutting tool that you've got, kind of bend it into a groove a little bit, and then pull down and voila. So from there, you know you're gonna be secured. And then there's another one on the other end that you do the exact same thing to and then you're good to go. All right, so we've completed the first couple of steps of installing the Brink Flare 400 HRV unit. We've got both of the 10 port manifolds installed now at this point. We have cut out our little bit of insulated ductwork here and connected it to the reductor gasket so that we can get a nice airtight seal to the 10 port. Um, we fastened it to the wall with the brackets that we've got, and we're probably gonna add a couple wall ties as well, just so that it's a little bit more rigid because you want these to be fastened securely so that you don't get that much vibration. So right now we're at the stage where we're gonna start actually running some of these lines of the semi-rigid ductwork into the manifold. And just one quick tip or one quick trick when you're doing this install is it's important to ensure that you've got some way of knowing what's going to be a supply run and what's going to be an exhaust run. So when connecting the semi-rigid to the manifold, it's pretty easy. You don't need one of those rubber gaskets, actually. You can just fit it through that sleeve there. And it's a pretty easy process. So for obvious reasons, take the cap off. And then just fit it in to whichever of the ports it will fit naturally into. And from there, all you gotta do is tape around there like I've done to these other three or five and we're good to go. So let's differentiate the supply and extract diffuser box caps. So this one right here, this is gonna be your supply side diffuser cap. This one's gonna be your extract diffuser cap. So you can see you've got one that's concave with a little dimple in the middle, and then you've got one that's convex. So these are designed in such a way such that you can picture the concave portion shooting air out from the center to the sides so that you get your good 360 air distribution in your supply side. And then in your extract, 
you've got the opposite effect. So air is going to be going in here. It's going to be hitting there and making sure that it collects inside for your extract. Okay, so we've just completed now the part of the system that deals with the air on the inside. So we've installed both of our manifolds and all of the semi-rigid ductwork going to the kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and living area. And now we're gonna install the big eight inch insulated ductwork. So both of these holes were for the manifolds. And now we need to connect the insulated ductwork to this one and this one. And if we refer to this handy map here that we've got, it's very easy to see that we need our supply to go right here and the extract to go there. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to take the eight inch ductwork and we're going to bring it up and all the way through here and we're gonna drill a hole into this exterior wall. So we are going to go through how to properly air seal this or the best way to do it. So when it comes to connect the insulated duct, like what we've got here, comes with a bunch of these gaskets. So the grooves on the inside of the gasket here fit into the grooves formed by the ridges of the corrugated pipe to create a nice snug fit. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're gonna be installing the supply and extract runs from the outside environment to the brink unit on the inside. So we've got our eight inch insulated pipe here, which comes with the Brink system. We've got it running all the way to the Flare 400 HRV that we've got inside. And as you can see now, we've got an exterior penetration in our air barrier that we got to deal with. So one of the best things you can do with this is the Roflex 200 gasket, which fits really nicely over these eight inch insulated ducts. So when it comes to slipping them on, it's really quite easy to get it nice and flush against the mento and then that's a complete air seal don't have to worry about that anymore and then you can just take your four pieces of Tescon Vanna around each edge and you've got an air seal next step is installing the cover plate for this so if you were to zoom in onto this, you can see that this is the top and this part's the bottom. So it gets oriented like that on the pipe. The way you can figure out that it's the top and the bottom is you've got this shingle lap here and then this eaves trough here. So if you were to picture water running down, it would go across, get collected here and drip off to the side. The way you connect this cover plate to the insulated pipe is using one of the gaskets that you get when you're connecting the other insulated ductwork to itself. So essentially you just take this, put a groove in there and connect it like so. 